yeah, there is a side of the market that does get choppy. There is a side of the market that equity prices uh, that do come in. So you better understand that both dynamics, you better learn how to trade from both sides of the market. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly update. Hope everybody's having uh, a great weekend. So very interesting week uh, last week in the markets. And if you look at the scoreboard, uh, you really don't get a really good appreciation of what happened. Um, pretty much everything flat, right? You had the S&P down a little bit, the Dow Jones uh, down a little bit, and the composite squeaked out a little bit of a gain. Uh, but when you look at the dynamics of kind of where we were only you know a month ago, three weeks ago, to kind of where we are now, if you're a bull, you're feeling a lot better, especially bull uh, on 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 the technology front. So only two, three days ago, if you've been watching this broadcast, we've kind of been uh, navigating pretty well. Um, the queues put in a double bottom, right? Double bottom a couple of days ago, and we had this really two-day big, big strong rally. And if you watched the Thursday night, uh, Thursday night video, I usually don't have a video on Thursday night. It's usually my res day, but I took uh, uh, Wednesday instead. Uh, we talked about a couple of scenarios playing out for Friday session. Uh, number one, I believe that the fact that we had this two you know, really aggressive days on the queues going from the 316 all the way back uh, to the 329 level, there was always a chance. There was always uh, a probability or a possibility uh, that a lot of members in the technology space were going to have a res day. And that's what happened. OK, and that was very, very good. The second thing we talked about on the Thursday night video was even though the indexes have a chance to kind of rest for Friday's session, I believed based on the idea that we finally reclaimed the 50 day moving average on the queues for Thursday's session, I felt even if there was a res day on the indexes, you're going to find a lot of names getting pulled up just because we've said this on Thursday, just because you get a closed macro on the indexes doesn't mean everything's going to go at the same time. And I made that point uh, pretty clear. Um, I felt like names like Amazon were still uh, underneath supply and you look at Netflix still underneath supply. And I said, nobody's really running out uh, and looking for Apple for Friday session because again, everything is still at supply. But I also believe that names over supply were going to make some sort of move and, you know, names like NVIDIA. And I'll tell you one thing, out of all the names that we discussed, for, you know, for the last six months or so or a year or even longer, uh, the names like Amazon and Google, um, Amazon, Google, Shopify, uh, Booking.com, ISRG, those names, right, that are, that, are, that are so lofty and so spready and at times so illiquid, those are the names we were looking for for a potential split. So when you woke up, and congratulations for you guys who had in the video overnight, but when you woke up on Friday morning and you turned around and you said, wow, what the hell's going on in the video? The video is the one who announced a four for one split. Um, and the most ironic part, it didn't need one, right? Maybe, you know, according to the board, it did. But if, if you do trade the video, and I trade the video, this is probably one of my top three favorite stocks to trade outside of maybe Tesla. Um, it had the speed, it had the power, it had the liquidity. So I was a little annoyed that this was the next one to, uh, to announce a split. But again, it is what it is. Uh, I, I believe, and I have to double check, but I believe uh, it's either June or July uh, that's going to be taking place and at some point it's going to trade around 150 bucks. So again, is it better for retail? Absolutely. Is it better for liquidity? I mean, I, I personally think liquidity here uh, was pretty good as well. But again, big, big move there. So you had a bunch of names that cleared out supply. You had names that we watched. And again, we were, you know, you know we'll go over the pivots in a second. Names like RBLX that I felt like I was talking literally every video uh, for the last two weeks. So, hey, maybe today's going to go. Maybe today's going to go. And it finally went on Friday. I was a little fortunate enough to catch this thing. But what I liked about Friday's session was the market did what I thought, right? Res day for the indexes. You had a bunch of names that woke up just because the indexes confirmed the previous day, uh, especially in the NASDAQ 100, and you know gave you really good opportunities and a bunch of names like a Boeing uh, or a letter U or you know RBLX, names like that, while the rest of the market uh, kind of rested. Here was the curveball. 
right? Here's the curveball. Everything was looking good around 2.30 or so. If you remember, guys, uh, the Dow was, you know, the Dow was up. The NASDAQ, you know, was down 15, 20 handles. And I said, look, as long as we don't, you know, sell off into the close, because remember, you know, it, it took a long time for the NASDAQ to reclaim the 50-day moving average. So I said, look, if, as long as the market doesn't sell off and bears reclaim the 50-day, I think that's fine. I think we're just having a good healthy rest and the market should resume on Monday and lo and behold, what happens at the close, you get a pretty, you know, disgusting candle into the close and we give up, you know, we give up basically the 50 day moving average in the process, which basically throws a really big monkey rush uh, into Monday's session. Now, look, is it possible? And again, if everybody believes in uh, dollars to donuts, lower highs, higher lows, all that, you know, all that stuff, the one good thing about losing the 50 day moving average the day after uh, you reclaimed it. The only good thing about it is we put in a higher high and a higher low. That's the only thing that I want to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt going into uh, Monday's session. But again, it doesn't really make you feel really, really great that the bulls are completely in control. And the one thing all they needed to do from Friday's session was, again, I didn't care that you know they were down on the day. The one thing I cared about is that stocks didn't have aggressive moves, aggressive moves uh, off their highs and give up a lot of gains. And that's exactly what they did. And if you look at the names uh, like Amazon, that again, we talked about on Thursday night, needed a you know big move before we talked about macro. You know, there was no reason for the stock to go down 44 points. If you look at Alibaba, you know, you know, pretty aggressive pull off the 10 day. If you look at Apple, and again, this is another name we discussed, wasn't yet ready for prime time, but at least it didn't need to kind of re, you know, re, claim uh, demand on, on the bear side. So again, I'm not 100% loving what I'm seeing uh, on the technology names. And you really have to scratch your head and say, well, why can't these stocks get a good, uh, good footing? Why can't they just sustain a rally? And just because it doesn't look good on paper now uh, doesn't mean that they could reclaim it right back on Monday. And that's how, kind of how erratic uh, the NASDAQ 100, especially the, the technology space has been. It's been just when you think you're about to crash, they, they rally back. And just when you think you've you, you got a good footholding uh, on what's happening back to the upside, they sell the market right back. So um, look, I definitely want to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt uh, for Monday's session. But again, you know, you know, the proof is in the pudding. The tape doesn't lie. So uh, if I don't see you know, if I don't see technology kind of reclaiming back the 50-day supply within the first you know, two candles of the day. And again, for all you guys who are watching this broadcast for the first time, uh, I only use uh, six 60-minute channels uh, throughout the day. So, you know, two candles of the day is enough, uh, enough size, uh, enough data for me to realize who's going to have control. So I definitely want to give the bulls uh, the benefit of the doubt. But if everything starts losing steam, we go right back. Uh, and the one thing, the only reason I am giving the bulls the benefit of the doubt, I do kind of like the way the semiconductor, the SMHs, kind of held in there. Again, remember, that, that's the leader in the NASDAQ 100. They're the ones that let us up. They're the ones that let us down. Uh, and now they're the ones leading us up again. And the one thing that's a little bit different from the SMHs uh, and the Qs, the semis never reclaimed the 50-day yet. And this is a big, big number uh, coming for uh, Monday session. I think the semiconductors uh, need to close this week over uh, you know 242. I think if they could reclaim uh, 242 on the SMHs on the close, then you could see how much airspace you have all the way to this 254, uh, 261 level. So I think if the NASDAQ 100 is going to have any type of strength, semiconductors are definitely going to have to lead the way uh, this week. You're going, you're going to need to see some of the former leaders or the tech heavyweights really wake the hell up, right? The Facebooks, uh, the Apples of the world, uh, especially Amazon. I mean, it's really sad to say, and this is where we kind of go back into um, you know, stocks that should be splitting that are not. Amazon is literally tradable four times a year. It really does feel that way. Um, you know, four times a year, it puts like a 300 point move in two weeks and then you, you don't hear from the stock for another quarter. So uh, that's that. So that's where I kind of believe uh, the tech space is going to need to get its leadership uh, from the semiconductors. Uh, when you look at other groups uh, like the, like, for example, the biotech space, um, again, here's another perfect example, almost like uh, the mirror image of the NASDAQ 100. And think about who is the biggest components, the biggest weight in the NASDAQ 100. It's biotechs and semiconductors. Bios uh, had a chance to really you know, stamp 
uh, their, their, their stronghold on the 50-day, and they closed below. Semiconductors did not reclaim the 50-day yet. So yes, the bulls have a very, very important job. It would be nice to kind of uh, see who's in control kind of by mid-morning on Monday so we can have a clear opinion and a clear channel to see which side of the market we want to uh, trade next, whether it's long uh, or short side. Uh, if you look at the SPYs, right, SPYs are building. They did a great job. They never broke uh, the 50-day moving average, right? There was a double bottom here. You could clearly see it. And now you have a couple of days more of building. You know, if the, if the SPYs can just reclaim this uh, 418 level, then yeah, I think we go back to uh, all-time highs. So the bulls have some work to do. Again, when you go through a lot of charts uh, this weekend, you're going to see a lot of crappy-looking charts. And this, the funny thing is, these stocks could have been really good on Friday if there was a continuation day. We got the gap on a lot of names. Uh, everything was up pre-market, and there was a nasty pull uh, that pulled a lot of things back. So going into uh, Monday session, I will give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. Uh, if you, um, if I look at my watch list or my pre preparation list uh, for Monday session, it's all it's all upside, right? It's all upside. Again, I was sell bias for three weeks. I became bull bias on Thursday uh, from excuse me from Wednesday into Thursday and Thursday into Friday. So uh, and now again, just as you guys can see, and especially for all you guys who've uh, only been trading for a couple of years. Yeah, we've had a tremendous bull market. We've had an unbelievable bull market. And now you've seen the last two, three months that there's a lot of um, there's a lot of worry. There's a lot of things that are unclear. You can't get a lot of um, you can't get a lot of continuation. You know, long, short, people are chopping themselves up. Yeah, that's exactly what most people sign up for every single time, you know, they open up their first brokerage account. Just unfortunately, you don't realize it's going to happen to you until you until you live with it. And you've been trading for 20 weeks or 20 months. Yeah, there is a side of the market that does get choppy. There is a side of the market that equity prices uh, that do come in. So you better understand that both dynamics, you better learn how to trade from both sides of the market. And if you are a long-term investor, have a long-term plan. Don't let the day-to-day the -day fluctuations of the market hurt you. And especially uh, for all you guys who are in the crypto Bitcoin space. Obviously, uh, I'm not a guy in that space. I'm probably the, the least... Uh, qualified to speak in that space. I don't know what these things are, right? But if everybody's been watching the, the, the crypto space in the last several years, you've seen the rock star Bitcoin has been. You've seen uh, the rock star that Ethereum and all these other alternative coins have been. And now you're kind of seeing the other side of it. Does it mean that's the top and these things are going to crash forever? No, of course not. You know, But again, just remember, asset classes, whether they're stocks, uh, bonds, future, whatever it is, Bitcoin, they're going to go up, they're going to go down, right? It's been like that for generations before you. It's going to be uh, like that for generations after you. You just have to kind of keep it into stride, keep a level head, know exactly what you, know, know exactly what you want, your long-term uh, outlook in these things, and just always understand, like I've been saying this for years, always keep this in mind. You want to make sales uh, when you want to, not uh, when you have to. So let's talk about Friday's action. Pretty good session. Uh, you know, not a lot. Right, not a lot, but a pretty good session, uh, nevertheless. Uh, Tesla is still underneath supply, uh, and, and again, I, I, Tesla was great this week. Not to the point that a lot of people are going to turn around and even recognize, but actually gave us. If you've been watching the broadcast, it's been giving us like you know really good channels in the middle of the week. You could catch some water flow in the middle of these channels. Macro wise, nobody in their right mind would turn around and say, "Well, you know what, Tesla looks great." It doesn't, right? It absolutely doesn't. Uh, it had a chance to reclaim the 10-day moving average, and it got rejected at the same area here. So Tesla's just having a hard time just staying above the 200-day moving average. So it's not one of those names that you really want to focus, especially on the long side, until they start reclaiming. So finally, right, RBLX, uh, we've been talking about this thing, and as I joked around, feels like 500 times. Uh, maybe this is the day. And you know what? Finally, today was the day. Uh, you saw really, really big, or Friday was the day. You saw really, really big moves, uh, big option buying coming in for the June 90s, the June 95s, the June 100s, the June 105s, I even believe. Uh, and this was definitely a great, you know, I was very happy with the trade, uh, RBLX. And finally, right, we've been talking about this name for weeks and weeks and weeks, and finally got above this 78 level and took out all-time highs at 83, went to almost 85. So really nice move. I know some of you guys are holding a runner. Uh, obviously, the play in this thing kind of going forward is uh, any dip into rising support is obviously good. Red to green for experienced traders or a remount above uh, Friday's highs. So really nice job there. Congratulations for you guys who are still holding. Uh, Lamb Research never got there. 
Uh, Snap, not a big move, but again, it started popping with everything else and then it kind of turned around with everything else. So Snap, I was watching that 5750, 5750, 58 level, uh, 5750, 5775 level. And again, not a big move. Went to 54 and a half, excuse me, 58 and a half before everything got pulled. And obviously this thing is not going to be uh, any different. Uh, letter U, nice move there. So here's another name with a lot of big option flow. Uh, letter U, 93 needs to build. We saw uh, also um, the, the August and I think September, not, excuse me, the July and August uh, they came for the 100s, they came for the 105s, they came for the 115s. So it took out this whole little baby channel here at 93, uh, went almost to 95. I still like it. If the market has any type of juice next week, it could still be 98, 99 on letter U. So keep an eye on that. Google never got there. Uh, Zoom never gave you a second entry. It opened up above that 28 level, uh, put in a high of 29 and change, and then just completely died uh, with everything else. Uh, Maxim I still like. Again, if the, if the semiconductors are going to have any juice this week. I mean, this is such a long chart. I mean, this is such a long setup. Look at look at the weekly view on this thing, right? This is a daily view, but look at look at the weekly view on Maxim, right? This is a, a, a channel going all the way back to January, right? I mean, this is a long, long channel. If you could start clearing out the top of the supply, I still like this thing. I think this thing goes. Uh, Boeing, nice move on Boeing. Uh, 232.50 needs to build. Here was Boeing, right? Here was Boeing. It took out the 232.50 was the highest candle into supply, and it traded all the way up to 36 and change. I still like Boeing. If Boeing confirms, uh, there's a lot of room up into the 40s on Boeing. As I can see here, finally, right? Finally, finally spiked up. Uh, Boeing take on the way up. Here comes uh, 83.41 all-time highs. The 90 call buyers come in. Snap take on the way up, grinding to high to highs. Uh, and this was kind of a big deal. This is kind of what we knew. There was a potential for uh, a reject uh, in, in the market today. Uh, beware, this is one of the more, uh, this is one last supply zone here in the 3050s uh, area. When entering the position, make sure it doesn't get rejected. The high of the day uh, was 3080s and then obviously had a big decline uh, in everything else. So this is why we always say it's incredibly important uh, to understand where your supply zones are and not to trade uh, with uh, blindness. So 94 on deck, I almost went to 95. Uh, and that's it, right? And that's it. So going into uh, going into Monday, I definitely want to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. I do again have a very short memory, and I do know and I do remember we were sell bias for three weeks on technology. Something eventually will give in. You'll see it very very clean. It's probably in the next in the first two hours of the day. And again, we'll take a step back, we'll reassess, and obviously we'll have a better, cleaner opinion uh, for the following day. Guys, have a great night, have a great weekend, and with God's help, I'll see you all Monday. Take care.